we are at probably one of the cutest, if not the cutest bungalows on my street. Stuart is giving you kind of a from the street curb appeal kind of loop around to us because I am here with my new friend, Sydney. She and her husband, Tommy, you moved in when? Um, in 2019, August of 2019. 2019, so we immediately bonded. I am literally a stone's throw yes. <laughs> from her house. And she and her husband have just done wonders with this darling little stone bungalow. And we kind of bonded because as I would be out walking, I would compliment you on yes. your yard. Sometimes you, sometimes your husband, Tommy, because they've just done such a wonderful, wonderful job. And then the more we got to know each other, the more we bonded over thrifting yes. because she is a thrifting queen. So tell me a little bit about your house. You've been here since 2019, yes. but how old is your house? Um, it was built in 1938. Um, so when we initially looked at it, I hated it. Um, <laughs> I, just, I hated the stone. Um, and then we sat on it for a couple days and I ended up falling in love with the stone and that's in the, ended up being the reason that we purchased the house. And so. you guys, tell a, give a little backstory where you moved from to move into this kind of inner city neighborhood. Yeah, so when we moved to Oklahoma, we moved to the North Edmond area. Um, we originally came from Fort Worth where everything is tight and compact. Um, so we decided we wanted some space. We moved out to North Edmond um, on about Edmund, an acre. Excuse me for interrupting. Yeah. Edmond, by the way, for those of you that are outside of Oklahoma, is kind of a suburb to Oklahoma City. It's about 20, 30 yep. minutes from here. Yep. So go ahead. Um, so we moved out there. We bought about an acre. Um, it also didn't have any landscaping. It was our project. We did that in every house. Um, we figured out that there were some things that we liked about being out there and being on an acre, um, but we always found ourselves downtown in Midtown and Uptown, that kind of area. Um, and I grew up in a very old home um, that my parents actually renovated. And so I love old things. I love old houses. Yeah. And um, so I convinced my husband to move down to this area <laughs> and we haven't really looked back since. Yeah, we love it here. It is a really, I've said it before, Stuart, let's kind of walk around as we talk. It's really a vibrant area. We're like five minutes from downtown and we're within walking distance from all these wonderful restaurants and bars and just all sorts of different kind of, of mercantile yes. type places. So let's let's start over here if we can, Sydney. And first of all, who is this little kitty in the um, window? That is our rescue cat, Tucker. Um, we also have three dogs. I went to PetSmart for dog treats and came home with the cat. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the story of him. He's more like a dog than he is a cat. Um, and, and we love him. He's great. And, so. and this is, is proof in the pudding that you can have animals mm -hmm. and you can still have a beautiful yeah. yard like this. So there is, she's got a little island out here. Stuart, if you can you showed it at the beginning if you can kind of do a close-up so you've got an island out here that looks to me sydney like you've got some maybe lime mounds by rhea Correct. and do you know what kind of box would you have um baby jim I baby believe. jim i bet i, I love baby jim that's, right. that's a southern living plant um, and then you've got some yarrow in here. This mm -hmm. looks like Silverado Sage. Yes, it is. We lost that, or I thought we lost that during the freeze, um, and it's starting to make a little bit of a comeback. Um, but yes, that's Wow, sage. that's incredible. Yeah. That shows the power of mulch because that's typically not even really frost hardy. No. Uh, I think it's to zone eight. You've got some artemisia in here. Yep. I love the fact that Sydney and Tommy have a really tight color palette and and it's one of the things that first attracted me to your house because they've you guys have played off of the gray of mm -hmm. your stone was that yeah. intentional um yes and one of my favorite colors is purple so it just happened to work out i honestly want to branch out every year but i can't go away from the purple it's it, so hard it's so, so hard it when is. you fall in love with something and then You've got the grays and the gray foliage and the silverado sage and the um, and the artemisia. Do you know what kind of yara or uh, salvia you have? I'm not sure what type it is. Okay, and I and I of course love the mossy rock. Now, would you share a little bit, if you will, 
about you were telling me mm -hmm. that if you had known now what you knew then, um, what what different? Yeah. So when we moved in, um, we had we had two trees that were planted here. One is, was literally planted right here underneath um, this water oak, and um, I, it really. Our first project is always to landscape houses when we come in. That's the first thing that we like to do. Um, so the first thing was like, let's get some landscaping around these trees, not thinking that that tree was eventually going to have to go because um, it was a big sycamore tree. Right. Um, and it was just going to cause issues with this tree. Um, if I could go back and do it again, because um, we ended up losing that tree, it snapped at the base in the and, freeze. And this was a sycamore as well? Yeah, they were okay. both sycamores. And so if I could go back and do it again, I would probably extend this out um, and come around here. But that, not to say that that won't might never happen, happen. at yep. some time in yep. the future. So Sydney and Tommy, like the rest of us, are just still trying to acclimate to all of the the problems that we had last year and trying to modify our landscaping accordingly. But I love the way, do you know what kind of pansies you have? Um, they're from TLC and they're called the Ocean Blend. The Ocean Blend, which some people call lavender, some people call blue. Mm -hmm. um, whatever you call it, it is a beautiful color echo with the pansies and then the salvia and then that's kind of carried up through to the front. Now the last um, garden tour that I did at another uh, historic home in Heritage Hills, I talked a little bit about their grass treatment. So this is a situation where you guys, do you have Bermuda grass? Mm -hmm. Bermuda. Yep. And then you have overseeded it Correct. with? Um, fescue. Fescue? And I'm not sure exactly what type of fescue it is. Okay. The yard is my, the grass is my husband's hobby, so. And, and, and he is, he, he treats it very lovingly. I have seen him out here. Might be crossfire. Um, who knows, there are so many new fescue blends. Some people overseed their Bermuda lawns with fescue. Some people do just like a perennial rye or whatever, mm -hmm. both, both work. And it's important to point out, you have to irrigate it. You do, yes. And she, you, Sydney, like, like me, we both face south. So it can get really, really hot on this exposure, especially when you've had sun before, or had shade before, yeah. and then you've lost it. Yep. So, so you guys have carried, and I'm sure this was very intentional, you've carried the gray up here, the gray and the lavenders and the deep purple in a number of different plants. So starting over here, Sydney, what all do you have? So a blue atlas, um, which I think is, is really pretty common. Um, I think it has some weeping tendencies. Um, I don't necessarily think it's, it's a weeping um, blue atlas, but on the bottom it has some weeping tendencies mm -hmm. and on the back it does. Um, I especially love this tree. Um, it's one of my favorite trees in our yard. Um, well, it looks great with your house. Below that, um, we have some cactus um, that was actually here when we purchased the house. And it's, as you can see, it's in a pot. I love it. I think it gives a little bit of a different dimension um, to the front flower bed. Um, and then I have some lantana that currently is in blooming. Um, that's right in front of that. That's also purple. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, the pansies. And behind that is catmint, um, which is kind of a pollinator's dream. Yeah. I love it do so you, much. Do you know what summer. variety this is? I don't know which catmint it is. Well, this is, I have to compliment you, this is one of the healthiest stands of catmint I have seen in many a while. It doesn't have spider mite or anything, and obviously you guys know how to keep it pruned back so that the, it, the stand of it remains really full and bushy. And I just love, as you said, the textural contrast between, and, and the color echo too, all mm -hmm. of these kind of foamy, sh kind of foamy, greenish, dusty gray greenish. greens. Yep. I love that, blue greens. So the cactus, the blue atlas cedar with its really sweet pine cone. Stuart, would you mind getting a close up of these dear little pine cones? Do you ever use those at Christmas? Yeah. When we, we get this wrapped pretty tightly um, for Christmas and inevitably a lot of some of these branches break off and I save them and use them for um, some inside decor that have 
with, with the little pine cones yeah, on it. Yeah, and it's, and it's also kind of an icy, fun greenery mm -hmm. to use indoors. I had one in my backyard, Sydney, that I lost, I think, probably to og &E. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Which happens yeah. sometimes. <laughs> um, and then is this Poe's Castle, Artemisia? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, with, are those some azaleas, azaleas. back there? Mm -hmm. they, they look like little encores, are yep. they? Yes, they are encores. Encore azaleas. Yep. So she'll be reblooming in the spring, yep. in the fall. And then just standard Yopon hollies. Yep. That's correct, yeah. And yours looks like one of yours took a hit, but I, it's coming out. I, we're working on it. It's the only one that, that had an issue. So well, that's pretty amazing. We got pretty lucky with, with um, some of the smaller shrubs, not necessarily so much with some of the larger stuff that you'll notice in our backyard. But And then I like the way it's, it's interesting. I don't, was this in place before you moved in the, the stone and the, the... The stone and the cordon edging were in just up here. We mimicked it out here, um, and then we also, when we go to the back, you'll see that we mimicked all that in the back. There was okay. pretty much nothing and there. So, and so basically just left intentional yep. gaps in it mm -hmm. so that you could put more stone in. And you've got these great kind of stone, built-in stone planters here. These were here, mm -hmm. weren't they? they were. yep. Okay. And some little boxwood balls. You mm -hmm. love, apparently I noticed also right away you love boxwood as I much as like I boxwoods. do. I do like boxwoods. And, and softness with the ivy here. And then this just wonderful kind of, I just love the way when you come up your steps, you're just flanked by your signature color. And all of these really pretty gourds and pumpkins. And she selected just, just the right amount of them. And then I love the color of your is this a faux wicker or real? It's real wicker. Re I was going to yeah. say, wow. Yeah. Thankfully, it is, you, you've got an overhang mm -hmm. here, so it's rather protected. And then did you guys intentionally paint it to match your trim? They or were did gray. We had them in our previous house, and um, they just worked out perfect. Well, yeah. that's miraculous because a lot of times that's a great tip is to plant yeah. is to paint your outdoor furnishings or some of your accessories yes. to match the trim of your house. I just I just love everything about it. Talk to me about these marvelous planters. Yeah, so these planters, um, I, I like old, but I also like some modern and geometric shapes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's totally different than the rocks and the curves that we have um, in the flower beds. So um, when I saw these, I, I had to have them. And um, we also have some in the back. And I tried to get two more sets, but with COVID, I haven't been that lucky. So. <laughs> well, hope springs eternal. Yes. Doesn't it? And they're so impactful from the street, Sydney, and they're just the perfect scale. Stuart, you can probably kind of get that, that they're just the perfect scale for her front porch. And I think that sometimes that was a problem with previous owners mm -hmm. is they couldn't quite get that scale down. And you have really enhanced what, what I love about this house is the symmetry of it. And you have really enhanced it. And then over here, you've just repeated. Yep. The Yopons, the catmint. Um, I, I love the catmint. I love the smell of the catmint. And I especially love, like I mentioned in the spring and in the summer, lots of pollinators. Um, we have actually lots of bumblebees. That's which great. Is, you don't yeah. see them very often anymore. Um, so I'm always on the lookout for the bumblebees, but tons of honeybees and bumblebees, and they really, really love that stuff. And so does Tucker love it too? Tucker loves it. Yes. <laughs> if, if you're not careful, he'll be hiding in the catmint, just laying in the catmint, I think sometimes asleep, and then we get home from work and he jumps out of the catmint. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. that, ha that happens. Yes. Is he a little tipsy? A little bit when <laughs> he gets just, out of there. Yeah. <laughs> he loves it though. And, and, and I, again, I just love tone on tone so that the, the pretty little lavender blue flowers are the same color as your pansies. And, and then what kind of grasses do you have back in here? I don't, those were here when we bought the house. Okay. And so I'm not 100% sure um, what type they are. What type they are. Yeah. And then, and even the cactus. Uh -huh. Is this one also in a pot? Um, it's not in a pot, it's in the ground. Um, I actually, I planted that one because I wanted to repeat it and have the symmetry on the same side. So, 
Well, you have just done a divine job of absolutely everything. I, I just loved it when you guys moved in and I liked it even more once we got to know one another. So do you mind if we go to the backyard? Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Well, you guys, I'm so excited to show you this charming backyard. So we uh, have a couple of things that have joined us. <laughs> one being Sydney's husband, Tommy. Cheers, Cheers. neighbors. And I can always remember Tommy's name because I've told you before, I'll mm -hmm. tell you again, he reminds me of my youngest brother, Tommy. You look a lot like him, so it's kind of a Makes nice... It easy. Yeah, it does make it easy. Right. And you guys, this, this backyard is just so absolutely charming. And starting with one of my very favorite things, you guys know, look how they've used gravel here. Talk a little bit about this. Yeah, so this is actually um, more of a drainage Thing than it is um, for looks, but we love the looks of it. It's effective um, with with water, and so um, and you'll see in the back more where we've continued that on um, with a little bit bigger stones, um, but more for water drainage than looks. But we love yeah. the look. But it, it works and it looks great with your stone. Is this a Taylor juniper? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because in, in our neck of the woods, we really can't do Italian cypress right. because they're just, they aren't really cold hardy. But we can do Taylor junipers and you have used it just brilliantly here and it accentuates without hiding too much, I think, all of the wonderful stone. And more uh, yopon, yep. it looks like. And are those obsession nandinas? Yes. They look like obsession nandinas. You guys really like southern living plants. I had some carrots in the front. I, I see your videos and you talk about carrots and I love that <laughs> lime green carrots too. And you know that would go great with yes. your house. Maybe where it's a little more protected mm -hmm. up underneath your eave. So talk about you two as a design team. Who, who, who is who is the laborer, who is the designer, or do you both share? I'm the laborer. For the most part. For the most part. I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can yeah, attest yeah. to that because yeah. he's always working out in the yard on your beautiful turf. But but when it comes to like color selection and things like that? Yeah, so um, he always gives his input on the color and he really loves the purple. Um, we chose the purple, well, we've chosen the purple every Let's year that we've moved church. in. Um, and it's just really worked and we haven't switched it up. but. He chose the purple initially, so I'll give him credit for that. I, I take so. full credit for that. Well done you. Yeah, and anything yeah. else you'll take credit That's for. Right. If anybody wants to give it. I don't get it that it often, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so over here you've done the same thing. You've got a little bit larger gravel, which mm -hmm. is beautifully contained. And I love that this is, is kind of a rusted metal that perfectly echoes the color of the fence. And you said you have a great neighbor, and so you guys mm -hmm can talk back and forth about what needs to be done and what you want to do. Yeah, he's very open to the things that we want to do um, and, it, you know, staining fences and things like that and color choices. He pretty much gives us free reign and we're very lucky to have a neighbor like that. So we really appreciate him. But um, yeah, he's he's basically like, just do whatever you want and pick that, the colors. And That is a really wonderful wonderful thing and look at this did you guys do this espalier we did yes we did. now what kind of vine is this um it's jasmine star jasmine and i picked that because um in certain spots of this fence it gets a lot of afternoon sun this mm -hmm. in the middle where you see that it's not quite filled in yet um, it, it's a little more protected from this tree um, but i wanted something that's that was evergreen um, and and bloomed at the same time. Did you have this growing up? No. No? No. But I thought about doing English ivy, but with the heat over here yeah. and um, it, it just doesn't bloom. And when this blooms, it smells so good also. So that's. So Tommy, did you yeah. do the grid for this? Mm -hmm. We did. We, um, we had three or four that we had found on Pinterest. And, um, she actually made her mind up and we, we got the string and it took us a little while to figure it out. It was a little a little time consuming, but, uh, but yeah. Try to decide how big and diamonds just, I wanted. Yeah, and it's just green wire where you got, you, you knocked it out of the park on the scale. And it looks like you have, you planted one about every, a little more than 24 inches, mm -hmm. 30 inches maybe? Yeah, ish. Yeah. And were they, did they start out as what size? Gallons? Uh, very, yeah. Uh, well, maybe actually smaller than that. They were, when I planted them, they 
and um, kind of trailed them a little bit and trained them, they weren't even up to here. And so we planted them um, maybe in the beginning of the summer. So oh, this is, is this is the this awesome. is one season one summer worth of growth on this. That is so. marvelous, and it goes across the top. And you must water it. Do you have irrigation? Over we there? do not have irrigation over here. Um, I do water it by hand. Um, really is. But there's quite a bit fairly. of shade here too, so it, it holds what moisture we do put. Well, in. and you've got this great gravel mulch. Now I think sometimes there's a misconception that if you have a rock mulch that it's going to really retain heat and it does do that in the winter time but in the summertime it really helps hold in moisture and it's a beautiful, the, the color of it just really matches the color of your house. And I think sometimes there's, you can sometimes look at a, a landscape and you think, oh, something's not quite right mm -hmm. here, whatever. And I think a lot of times it's because the, the gravel is not in the same color family mm -hmm. as the stone on the house or the brick on the house. So I think it's really important that you get that right. And obviously you guys have. And this is just, I just am immediately zen when I come <laughs> back here. It is just so soothing and just so nice. Definitely our happy place. We spend a very large amount of time back here. So Tommy, tell you you were saying earlier, give us a little bit of a history of what this looked like before. Uh, yeah, so we wanted a little bit more of an open concept. And as you can see, here's where one of the posts were. So right here. Yeah. As this, uh, basically, if you just come inside this edging a little bit, this was closed off. This was a fence. We had a gate right here, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea was to just, this fence need to be, needed to be redone. Um, on this side of the driveway. So we had already had a cedar fence. Uh -huh. So we decided let's move that over, open it up, put the gate in up here, the entry gate, and uh, turned out really good, really opened everything up. Well, and I, I love it, and I also like the fact that when you've done things, you haven't gone bonkers and using too many different types of hardscaping materials. You've really kept it pretty limited and in the same kind of color family. And, well, I was asking Sydney what, is this an English Tudor style? I guess it is with your steeply pitched roof. Sometimes in these old neighborhoods, it's, they seem to be a hybrid. Yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. very unique, which I don't know what you told you when we first looked at it. It was kind of like, I don't know if we're big fans of this stone. And, um, you know, looking back now, it's what, it's what made us fall in love with it. Yeah. So it's really just kind of a unique house. So. Well, and it, it just, you guys have just, as I said, you've just enhanced it just beautifully. And I, I, I like the fact that the drive doesn't necessarily even feel utilitarian. It almost feels like a patio. Right. It makes this whole area, I can see if you had a large party or something, you could easily put tables out here yep. with umbrellas. You mm -hmm. could really uh, accommodate a large number of guests if, if you're having a party outside or doing some outside entertaining. And then I just, so you've carried, let's talk a little bit about the plants before I absolutely am just so enthusiastic about your outdoor seating area. But here you have echoed the same things that yeah. you've got in the front, the same color palette. You've got some, it looks like lots of hucarellas. Yep. And tell, you were t last time I was here, you were telling me about your... Yeah, so in the front we have yopons and boxwoods. Um, in the back I decided to go with hawthorns um, just for a little less manicured um, approach back here because there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit less maintenance for, for us. And so um, we did lose all of the hawthorns that you'll see um, in our landscaping. We lost all of those in the freeze, every single one of them. I think it was like 42. Oh my gosh, 42. And yeah. talk about losing a lot of foundation plantings and infrastructure. Right. Yeah. And you know, one thing I think we need to mention, that is not an inconsequential financial loss. Yep. No, no. So the fact that, and, and, and quite frankly, as you drive around in Oklahoma City, a lot of people couldn't afford to replace yeah, a no. lot of what they've lost or even had their trees trimmed, which is also a pretty big financial undertaking. So, so especially since I live near you, I so appreciate the fact that you have brought it back and it looks so beautiful. Stuart, if you don't mind, I love the way you've got your garage door flanked by these two tall pots. And are these faux or are these? They're faux. They're, they're plastic. Faux, yeah. But they look like they might yep. be real slate 
or something. Um, they are actually self-watering because um, most of everything that's back here in pots or hanging baskets, I run um, irrigation to. Um, so it's not as time consuming. These, we don't have that option. So I chose self-watering pots for over here. And you guys both work full time, no kids, no kids. Uh, but you work full time. So that time is a consideration. Right. And in Oklahoma, last time I, were he I was here, you and I were talking about, you really make, you have to make a real commitment yeah. <laughs> to your landscape. You have to know that you're gonna have to do supplemental watering while you're still trying to be responsible about overuse of water. Yep. And, and you were also saying <laughs> a little bit earlier that if it were up to you, you would, your entire patio would be filled with container plantings. Uh -huh. yeah. But yep. you put the kibosh on that, Tommy. That's one of the things I've won on. <laughs> I don't win very many times, but I've won on that one. Yeah. Well, okay, so in, in, in the arm wrestle that is your landscape, right. you win That's some and you lose some. Right. But I, I'm sorry, but this is pretty nice compensation, Sydney, because look at this wonderful seating area you have out here. Oh my gosh, this is just, this is just so nice. Yeah, we kind of played off these rocks over here when we moved in, these gray rocks, and I think it goes pretty well with the trim on the house and the house in general. So. Um, that's why I chose this this gray color. It's also fairly easy to hide stuff on. We have three dogs um, that get up there also. And, and as you saw earlier, Tucker, our cat, he spends a lot of time up there. So stuff that doesn't show dog hair and cat hair for us is also a plus. <laughs> it's, it's also a go-to. So were, were these pavers already here? They were. Okay, yes. and so they go all the way back to here. And then look at this is, okay, here's a, here's a takeaway you guys that are watching. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose this, but this is a great takeaway, a great solution. Look at how they've got over here, just some of these concrete pavers. And it's given you an, an it keeps this from being messy, from getting muddy. Mm -hmm. It gives a nice secure foothold for when you're grilling. And it looks like a natural extension color-wise of the large pavers that you've got here. What kind of fern do you have? Is it shield fern? I, off the top of my head, I cannot remember exactly what it is. Those are a couple of years established. Autumn fern, yeah. And they're, autumn. maybe they're yeah, autumn. autumn fern. Yeah. And, but you've got a number of them and those are perennials. So mm -hmm. you don't have to, you've got lots, you've got a, a good, I think, ratio of annual annuals mm -hmm. to, to perennials. Sydney was telling me that some of your Silverado sage in front actually came back. That's remarkable. It did. It did. Yes. That is, especially given yeah. stuff that was supposed to make it didn't and stuff that shouldn't have did. It's taken this long, but um, they came back. I wanted to give them a shot, so yeah. Well, I think it's, it's great. And so your outdoor furniture, now this is faux wicker. Correct, yes. Okay. And did you guys select this specifically for this space because it just looks like the scale and everything is optimal? Yeah, so we, we looked for a while on something. We knew we wanted um, some sort of sectional. Um, and so we looked for a while to find one that uh, had, the right, had the right size and scale and um, dimensions. And we ended up finding this one and it worked out. Well, it, it, honestly, it could not be more charming. A perfect place for us to drink, you yes. know, to drink <laughs> our wine, to take a nap, to, you know. I've been known to take a couple naps out here. Yeah. <laughs> disappears yeah. and there she is and, and there she is yes. cuddled up with tucker yes or, or one of the dogs yes. uh tell me your dog's names again deuce gunner and richard deuce gunner and richard yes. so you have a whole family yes oh, yeah. a whole family affair here yes. charming charming candles you've got a repeat of these very signature touch i am a nut about signature touches so i dug these one of your primary signature touches these octagonal or whatever they are uh, container plantings. They're absolutely wonderful. You've got some gray dichondra yep. that's spilling out over the edge. And this is just another example of, of elevating the common to the uncommon where you've just got a large yopon holly that you've done the brilliant thing of limbing it up. Yep. Yep. I love the structure of these branches here um, and we just limb it up as needed. But the twists and turns of the of the trunks on these is one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite plants in the yeah. backyard. It's got kind of an oriental quality, yeah. I yeah. think. Well, and we've, we've discussed too, um, 
you know, maybe a thought of add, extending the patio with, for a covered area, but I won't, we can't I won't. get rid of that. No, really and I don't, I don't think you need to. And the other thing is that you still, this a good bit of the day, since this faces north, you're right. still mm -hmm. in pretty yes. comfortable shady conditions yes. over here. And then this pole here where you have created really an outdoor room by circumscribing your space here with this pole. So you put the pole in. We did not. The pole was actually really? here. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was here when we moved in. Um, the hanging baskets weren't. Um, the hanging baskets are, ironically enough, places sell large hanging baskets, but they don't sell the hangers for the large hanging <laughs> baskets. Um, so my dad actually custom made me those um, basket hangers and in the spring I actually have a cup some bigger baskets that I put out oh wow so that are even larger than that so well they they look very much like the hanging basket um, things that they've got in downtowns mm -hmm. you know small yeah. town yeah. downtowns and things like that so it, it really kind of I think communicates that cozy cozy small town vibe. Yeah. I, I love it and I again I love the way it defines this space and you've got an outdoor rug here mm -hmm. and so now this I, I really am fascinated by. Mm -hmm. You've got your back lawn is over seeded and yes. I see few to no dog pee spots. <laughs> okay so what is the trick? I Luck. Yeah, luck, I don't really? know the answer to that. Really? We we say that every every year. We're like, how do how do we not? I mean, we have three dogs, and two of our dogs are large dogs, so they yeah. do use the bathroom out here. They they pee in spots and um, it, whatever. You have to ask what type of fescue it is. Um, it's a southern tall fescue. But or or what type of food yeah, <laughs> you're feeding, yeah. you know, or 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 whatever, yeah. because that is such a problem, and I can't believe it's not a problem back here. You know, we've been lucky at every house we've been at. It's um. This is the first fescue yard we've had, full fescue. But I was worried about that going into it, especially that and just the, the activity they have on it and all the traction, but it's, it's held up really well. Are your dogs older or younger? They're older. They're older. They're older. Yeah. They're older. So maybe they're not, yeah, they're not quite as, as vivacious maybe as right. they would be otherwise. But you have Bermuda under here too? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. My favorite, favorite thing is always the stones that has the moss grow on it. I simply adore that. And now, actually, the guy who um, we use to get all of our stones and stuff, I'll say, get me the mossiest stones you can find. Yeah. <laughs> lots of moss, lots yeah. of lichens. Yeah, yeah lots of, of uh, and, and look at the texture on that one side. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. And he actually gets all these out of Guthrie. Yeah. Really? Oh, they all come from Guthrie, yes. I like that. Homegrown. Yep, yep. Homegrown rocks. I need to, you know, I, I, I have some absolutely fabulous slabs of, of uh, rose rocks mm. that are oh, yeah. so Oklahoma. Yeah. I, need to, I need to get you one. Now, Sydney, last time I was here, you were telling me about how these spruces mm -hmm. had suffered and you just could not, could not discard them. I couldn't, they, they got spider mites really, really bad. Um, I treated them multiple, multiple times. Um, finally got rid of the spider mites and you can see up near the trunk where the spider mite damage was. They're starting to grow out, but I can't quite get rid of them. Um, so I put them in these pots and and giving them lots them. of TLC yep. and a second chance. Yep. Everything yep. deserves a second chance. And then it's out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or third chance. Someone will need them at some point. And I don't have space for them back here, but right. at some point I will probably a find a good home for them. Well, I, it sounds like you're like me. I have gifted many, many a plant. Uh, you've got some large hostas over there. Mm -hmm. Nellie Stevens that you said you thought from the history of your house that at one time they may have been in the front these, and they were moved to the back? These two left, the left one and the center one, were here when we moved in. That was pretty much all that was here um, besides the large trees um, when we moved in. Um, but at, I didn't have the heart to try to dig them up and move them. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, afraid they may suffer. Right. So we just decided to add more hollies and uh, even it out a little bit back here. So. Well, and I think if there is ever a winner of a plant in Oklahoma mm -hmm. landscapes, it's going to be Nellie Stevens hollies, yep. most hollies in general, because they just really can handle the extremes, mm -hmm. the extreme cold, the extreme heat. Now, if you have a, you know, 300 pound 
oak tree limb that falls on them <laughs> and shears them from the ice storm like it happened at my house right. not different so much yeah. it's a different story yeah. but nevertheless those are just absolutely gorgeous do you do lots of of amendment with any kind of acidifier or anything like that no You're acidifier just... um i i feed them um a couple times um you know, once it starts to get warmer and they start to put on some growth, I feed them with just some basic fertilizer, um, as I do everything back here. But I don't do anything special. To so them. how how large is your lot in general? Uh, I don't know. Do you know? The it's answer? just under a quarter of an acre. Okay, because you know, I think sometimes we consider ourselves to have small gardens, but you can really do a lot yeah. in these small urban gardens and create different garden rooms, which you very effectively have done. You've also got some hollies back here. Um, you've got some Arizona cypress yep. that is just gorgeous. You're, that may be the healthiest Arizona cypress I've seen they in a long time. They smell good. They're kind of wispy and the, different than the hollies. You know, the, I'm, I'm attempting to get the hollies more full, um, but I like the wispiness to them. Mm -hmm. I like the color. It, it brings some of the blue back here. Mm -hmm. um, they also so. handle the freeze really, really, yeah. really well. And yeah. they handle the heat and they're, they're yeah. drought tolerant. Yeah. They're a good recommended tree for Oklahoma. <laughs> And I love that color of blue, nice, nice screening. And the birds love them yep. too because of that open, airy kind You'll of- You'll find our cat Tucker a lot of times sitting right in front of those rocks. Cause like, there's like a, a lioness, like just, yeah. 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 yeah, I love that. Okay, so speaking of garden rooms, come around here. So you guys put in these pavers. We did. We did. Yep. And correct me if I'm wrong, Tommy, you guys did all of this work yourselves. We've got, um... A guy that has worked at each of our other houses that does the heavy lifting brings in the rocks and these actually are not pavers we poured these these are actual concrete okay so they framed them out and poured them um all the heavy lifting that type of stuff we have him do he brings in the trees and all that but um, but other th but the, other that but all the other stuff you have done yes. pretty much all of that you've yeah. got lots of it looks like Helen von Stein mm -hmm. lamb's ear. Yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful ear. I'm You're a big fan of lamb's ear. I love the texture. I love the velvety texture of that. And while it's not so much blue, it's kind of a silvery, oh, blue yeah. greenish. And so, yeah. I like it. That repetition of a design element across the space is what you have done just so effectively. And then we come back here to at my house, and you guys haven't seen my yard yet, but back here, I've got a little bit more space than you do. Okay. And this is where my potage is, oh. is, is in the back. But okay. you guys back here have this, and boy, this heat feels good. A charming little fire pit, or a kiva, as, yep. as many of us in Oklahoma would, would say. This is just so nice. And the goal is to, to mirror what we did over the patio and bring in some lighting uh -huh. and some electric to the back. Of the yeah, yeah, it, yeah so. I can see some string lights yeah, back here. Kind of and wonderful screening over here and you have been blessed with with really nice borrowed views yes. really nice borrowed landscape from really on all sides yeah which uh, yeah very which lucky. is very very nice it looks like some storm damage this is that part of this tree we lost a massive multi-trunk mulberry back here that used to literally arch over this oh. fire pit and arch over the garage um and it split during the during the ice storm and so we lost three of the six trunks and it just didn't look oh, right wow. so we had to take it out yeah i think unfortunately and i've i've done so many so many videos and in, in practically every one i'm talking about the fallout from the ice storm from the arctic blast and whatever and i think some sometimes people some of my viewers probably think oh my gosh get over it already yeah. it was bad but it was, it was bad. bad and was i bad. i did a flashback where i showed what it was like mm -hmm. that night yeah. when remember when the transformer oh, yeah. blew and the street was on fire yeah. and yeah. I, I remember thinking oh my gosh it's armageddon uh -huh. yeah. i mean i think we had no electricity yeah. for I don't know. We I don't yeah, even remember how long. It was like a week. Yeah. Yeah. It and was. These trees had huge limbs that were that were falling. Yes. The no power. There was no background noise, and it's eerie to hear those limbs falling. Snapping and breaking. Yeah. It, was it was bad. It was. Well, one. I'm I'm not sure exactly what the cause of that was, but I know there was one fire in the neighborhood where a tree fell on a grill propane tank. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. 
and I don't know, there was some kind of accelerant or something that yeah. made it, and, it, and that was another oh, yeah, a whole gift. other issue, whole yeah. Other little gift, because, yeah. you know, out in the country, maybe not such a problem, but we're all kind of close up and yep. um, yeah. close and, and uh, near to one another, mm -hmm. and I can't, I can't tell you how much I am enjoying being near to you guys. Yeah. They love it. It's so fun getting to fun. know you. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of this absolutely charming bugalo. I anticipate I will be down here. <laughs> come You're on. Always welcome. Always welcome. <laughs> For many more glasses of wine, and I hope you guys come and do the same at my house. Yeah. Sure will. Cheers. Thank you. Well, if you've held on this long for the fashion epilogue, I have a double mint. Wait a second, start over again. What is that thing? The double mint twins. Remember that old commercial that used to be on? Oh, Was it no. the double? Not, is it double mint? Yeah, it is double mint. Double, double mint gum. Okay, mint gum. okay, yeah. Okay, sorry, I can't think and talk. At the same <laughs> You're fine. Time. All right, and three, two. Well, if you've held on this long, here is our double mint fashion epilogue for today. If you're not interested, just go on to the next video. So me first. These wonderful earrings were a gift from Hubs when he went on a trip to Peru before we were married. So that's a long time ago. They're probably 30 years old. Uh, my sweater is also very old. It's J. Crew. My britches are H&M and my boots are Forever 21. I think this may be the first time in a long time I haven't had anything on that wasn't thrifted. Uh, my watch is Armatron and you guys have seen my dangly base bracelet, charm bracelet before. And then I also have, just in case it gets kind of chilly, which it might later, I've got a poncho. That came from, I don't know where. So there you go. Okay, Sydney, it's your turn. And for me, what I'm wearing is an oversized baggy sweatshirt. Um, I don't know what brand it is. Um, these are vintage thrifted Goodwill Wranglers. She is um, a girl after my own heart. <laughs> um, my shoes are Golden Goose. Um, some bracelets. Um, my husband got this one for me on our fifth anniversary. Um, my watch is a gift from my parents, and I think that's pretty much it. Okay, that's great. And that is our fashion epilogue for today.